Hello and welcome. My name is Alan Stankovitz, and today I'm going to give you a recap of the 2017 total solar eclipse that crossed the United States from the Pacific coast of Oregon all the way to the Atlantic coast of South Carolina. It was quite an amazing event. Uh, for anyone that's followed solar eclipses, uh, gosh, I remember back as a kid looking at maps and wondering about 2017. It's been a long, long time that we've seen a total solar eclipse across the United States. And they're very unique. Any one spot on the planet usually sees a total solar eclipse every 375 years on average. That's a long time to wait. And it is such a unique experience. I cannot tell you what it's like. You have to witness it for yourself and I think everyone on this planet should take time out to actually witness it. I really do. It is such an amazing event and really puts us in perspective as to our place in the solar system and the universe. It is amazing. And what's even more amazing is that we happen to live on a planet that has a moon that looks to be about the same size in the sky as the sun. Obviously it's not. The sun is much, much bigger, but it's also a lot further away and they line up almost perfectly on top of each other. And because of that, we are able to witness things that you can't witness in a lot of other places and any other planet in the solar system. It is just such a unique experience. To be able to see the moon pass in front of the sun and just barely cover it, and be able to see the sun's outer corona and uh, prominences is just amazing. So the next one will be in 2024, and I hope you go see it. In any event, I thought I would kind of put things into perspective of what it was like trying to plan for such an event. Let's take a look at a map. So in looking at the map, we see the path of totality extending from the west coast of Oregon all the way through to the east coast of South Carolina. This path is approximately 60 miles wide with the center line. Uh, you'd have to be about 20 miles either side to get a decent uh, glimpse of this total eclipse. You want to you want to be there where it's within two minutes, so you got good time to actually experience it. Any further outside of that line, and you're not going to see as much. So that's the path. Then, of course, where do you? want to go? Well, that's reliant upon weather maps. And I looked at weather maps, uh, satellite images from previous years showing where it's usually sunny. Well, it favors the western United, uh, part of the United States from Nebraska to Oregon, but every year is different. Sometimes Missouri's best, sometimes it's Nebraska, sometimes it's none of them at all. It's the roll of the dice. So, anyways, we decided to set up some reservations, which were hard to come by, and this was almost a year ago. We started booking rooms in uh, Cheyenne, Kearney. I tried for St. Joseph, but only uh, areas a little bit north of there was available, Mound City, Missouri. Tried for Columbia, but only Boonville was available. And my brother was able to get rooms in Mount Vernon, Illinois. And we needed three rooms for Jim and Kathy, my brother and his wife, Ramu, my friend, and my wife, Joe, and myself. So that's what we were aiming for. And this would give us at least multiple locations that hopefully one of them or multiples of them would be sunny during the eclipse. Well, as we became closer to the date, I started scouring computer models and looked at the GFS model and looked at the satellite images that they were projecting for cloud cover, which is tricky business. I understand it. It's not easy for computer models to do because clouds are kind of all over the place and to get really sunny conditions is really difficult to get totally clear skies. The goofy thing about this was is that uh, Saturday, which we, if that would have been the eclipse, would have had a lot of sunny areas, clear areas across the United States. Such was not the case. We had subtropical moisture coming up from the Gulf of California, 
monsoonal flow into the area and clouds were basically going to be all over the place. Some forecasts even showed Wyoming having trouble. So we looked and looked and looked through the computer models and days went on and eventually we decided, okay, let's drive to Omaha on Saturday and then that way we can go east or west. So that's what we did. Well, then the other issue, of course, is, is that if you only have select areas where there's going to be clear skies, you're going to get a whole bunch of other maniacs like ourselves trying to find clear weather. And you've got people from the northeast New York area that are looking for clear weather and you got people from Atlanta looking for clear weather and oh my gosh finally I just said to my brother Jim I said I think we're just going to try for Boonville Missouri and hope for the best and if we have to drive southeast in the morning of the eclipse so that's what we did uh, Jim was planning on Mount Vernon but then switched to join us in Boonville luckily for us um my nephew, JJ, who went to Mizzou, had a roommate that his parents lived in Columbia. And my brother, Jim, and his wife, Kathy, became friends with them. And Sharon and Dale were great hosts and offered to allow us to use their driveway to set up our equipment. So Monday morning, the morning of the eclipse, we're looking and looking at the models. And the models look good, and then all of a sudden they look bad again. And we said, screw it, we're going to Columbia. So that's what we did. So what you're seeing here is before the eclipse, you can see the sun in all its glory with a number of sunspots. Well, here we are now. The eclipse is starting, and guess what? Here comes high clouds. That's why these pictures look kind of fuzzy as you see these high clouds passing overhead. And at first it did not look ominous, uh, but as time went on, the clouds got thicker. We looked at the satellite images and sure enough there was a thunderstorm that had developed over Kansas City and the blow-off clouds were heading this way and it's like, oh no. And you can see here there's a lot of clouds covering the sun. Not good. Ugh, how disheartening. After all this time and prep work, maybe we may not see the eclipse. But Sharon came out and did her voodoo ceremony to bring the sun back and uh, I have no idea what this all means it was a very strange uh, I don't know what you'd call what she was doing but anyways it, it did bring the sun back so I, I thank you Sharon I will never mess with you you're a person that obviously has powers that we mortals do not have any event so onwards with the eclipse as we get closer to tally we still had some high clouds but they were a lot thinner now and so is the sun. The sun's getting a lot thinner, it's thinner as the moon is about to cover the sun. And now we're down to a thin crescent. Now it's time to take the filters off. And there you have the sun without a solar filter. Uh, as things get a little bit closer to totality, you start seeing Bailey's beads. These are these little areas of the moon. The moon's not a perfect circle. There are, there are valleys, there are hills, and those show up in these beads and they're called Bailey's beads because that's the guy that found them and first discovered what it was and just about now we're just about entering the, the beginning of totality which lasted in our area two minutes and 40 seconds approximately and we're just seeing the final beads and now the sun has disappeared poof so what does this look like, at least from afar? Well, here is a wider angle view. We were about a minute or so before totality, and you can see the thin clouds that were passing by. Uh, it was an eerie sight. It felt weird. The sun does not have its heat energy. Uh, it, there's really no heat coming from the sun, yet you can still see shadows if, you know, that are a little bit dimmer, but it asks, an, it, uh, casts an eerie glow on the landscape but it's not anything totally unusual yet but there's something just not right with the sky and as you get closer to the beginning of totality you're going to see and thankfully this is because of the high clouds you can see the shadow of the moon about to pass overhead you're going to see the right side of the screen turn dark and this is the moon's shadow passing over the clouds overhead which is quite a unique experience to see that you would not see if you did not have high clouds. So that is a good thing for high clouds. Here we go. 
We're about ready to enter totality. We will see the diamond ring. There's the diamond ring. And now we are in totality. And it is freaky. It is amazing how fast things turn dark. And it is dark. You can see stars. You can see, we, we saw Jupiter. And this is through thin, uh, thin clouds that we're seeing these things. So it's eerie. The street lights come on. Uh, if you look at uh, this image here, we're seeing pictures just before totality. You see the lights come on in the house. And there's still shadows, but they're very, very freaky weird. And it's almost like a full moon is showing at this point. That's how dark it is. But it's not a full moon. It's, it's, you, it's weird looking to look up in the sky and see this ring. I mean, can you imagine if you were three or 400 years ago and this happened to you? I mean, it'd be a life-changing experience. You wouldn't know what the heck happened to you. you. You would think, oh my God, the gods are angry. Here's some uh, close-ups. These are compiled images. These are stacked images where a number of images are comp compiled into one photograph. On the left side, we see the uh, Bailey's beads, and on the right side, we see prominences, which is the glowing gases of the sun. But what I was really hoping for was some really nice shots of the corona. This is the outer atmosphere, uh, the winds blowing away from the sun, and the solar wind, that is. And these corona, the corona extends out a number of solar diameters, but unfortunately because of the, thi the thin clouds I was not able to see that far out. But I tried a different number of exposures, stacking pictures on top of pictures, to try to bring out the detail in the corona. And although I was successful, I was not able to see it all the way out as far as the number of diameters as I had hoped. So that was the one thing that did not turn out as, as planned. But all in all, this was such an, uh, a success. So here is a live video now of the total eclipse. And we're past the halfway point, and in a number of uh, seconds here, you're going to see the sun re-emerge on the right side. So the moon covered the sun from left to right, and now we are about to see the sun re-emerge. Look at the prominences on the right side. We have what looks almost like a detached prominence on the right side there. It was amazing to see the prominences. Just, and you can see this with the naked eye. I mean, that's the amazing thing. So here comes the sun. And there it is, the diamond ring. And this happens, this is real time. This is what we're seeing in real time. It happens so fast. That's why it's always hard to photograph and image these. Now here are some pictures that I stacked together to show some different uh, views of the diamond ring or the first glow of the sun as it re-emerges. And by stacking different images with different exposures, you get some different effects of the diamond ring. And color, too. This, this uh, particular one, uh, because I had some pictures of the blue sky in the background that were stacked together, uh, you get kind of a blue glow to the corona on the left side, and the, the right side has a bit of yellow to it. Uh, it was very colorful in this one particular image. Uh, another shot here of the... This was the last image I took before. I had to put the solar filters back on. I don't want to damage the camera because now the sun has re-emerged from view. So we'll take one wide-angle view look at the re-emergence of the sun and call it a day. Again, totality is two minutes and 40 seconds where we were, so it's not that long. And you'll see now on the right side, the opposite of what we saw earlier, we're going to see the, the, uh, the sun reemerge from right to left. And you can see the shadow of the moon passing across the sky. It's just amazing to see that as the sun reemerges. So with that, I will call it a day, and thank you for staying with me. I know this has been a long video, uh, but I didn't know how else to really portray everything and every aspect of it, because it's not just the eclipse itself, it's the lead up to the eclipse, which, uh, gosh, <laughs> although it was anxiety-ridden, it was part of the journey. 
and something you did not want to leave out of a video. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in 2024 for the next total solar eclipse across the United States. Okay, how long does this event take place? Another hour and a half? About. Woo! Wow. That, that was spe that was spectacular. That was. Well, there were clouds, but hey. Yeah.